Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. Welcome to the AEW Dark Review for the 11th of August 2020. Can't believe we're already halfway through August almost. Anyway, um, Dark is usually a good show. They ran really long this week with uh, over 90 minutes of action in several matches. We see Luchador Ray Phoenix against Lee Johnson to kick off the show. Johnson has yet to get a victory, 0-9, and Phoenix has a record of 8-5 in 2020. Uh, Johnson pretty much holds his own early, which is surprising to me. There was a point when the Lucha Brothers were one of the top tag teams in AEW, and now Phoenix is having difficulty with a guy who has not uh, even won a match yet. Phoenix has uh, a little bit more killer instinct. Then normal here, he hits several strikes, head kicks, and even a uh, jump spinning kick uh, off the apron at one point. Phoenix hits the black fire driver for the win. Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard defeats uh, somebody I actually worked with in Alex Chamberlain. I worked with Chamberlain the first two years, or the first few years of his career in New England Independence. What uh, what a mild, quiet kid he was back then, and just to see where he is a decade and a half later is kind of cool. Anyway, he makes his AEW debut here. Spears is 8-2 and two, uh, this year. Spears goes for the arm of Chamberlain for the majority of the match. Um... Spears' glove is checked partway through the match, but there isn't any. And Spears hits the C, uh, C4, which is a Death Valley driver, for the win. Post-match, Bland Blanchard hands Spears uh, object to load the glove, and he knocks Chamberlain out. I don't quite get the point of knocking the guy out after the match, but maybe it'll pay off some way. Uh, the Gun Club of Billy and Austin Gunn versus Embuda and Sean Dean. Not a bad match, although Gunn, as in Billy, is certainly getting to the point where he's just here, I think, to get his son over. Anyway, uh, the, the Enhancement Talent Tag Team makes separate entrances. Austin and Dean starts off. Austin takes control immediately. And there's a little momentum for the uh, enhancement talent, but it doesn't go anywhere. Gun Club experience prevails. And Austin hits a hip toss into a neck breaker for the win. Uh, then match number, th then the next match, Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford defeat Michael Stevens. Stevens in his. Uh, debut is more, at least to me, entertaining than, uh, than Kip Sabian has, has been. Sabian is good technically in the ring, I guess. I just see him as a bland guy who's there to fill an international quota. I don't see anything in him, but, um, anyway... Um, we, we notice that, um, Stevens, who is, um, you know, not quite ready for national television yet, but at the same time, he has definitely more charisma than Sabian does, and if Sabian honestly didn't have the girl, I don't even know if he'd be on the show, um, Taz and Shivani. Kind of make fun of the match. Uh, Sabian wins with a neck breaker. Really a nothing match and makes me wonder why it was even on the show. Jumping to that. Um, some head scratching booking up next as Private Party. Defeat Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. Pillman Jr. is a guy they should not be wasting. So especially as an enhancement talent. And yes... Part of it is because he's a second generation star, but also part of it is if you've seen his work in MLW or elsewhere, he's so much better than he's being allowed to show here. 
Private Party is a passable tag team at this point, but they just are two spot, spot, spot for my personal taste. They have come a good ways uh, since the debut of the show a little less than a year ago, but Garrison and Philman worked together better as a team. Uh, Quinn allows, or Quinn hits a top leg drop and splash for the win. Then we move into Jurassic Express of Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Marco Stunt, defeating Corey, he uh, Corey Hollis, uh, Pineapple Pete, and Aaron Solo. Jurassic Express uh, takes Solo out for the first part of the match. And, I mean, there's, there's triple team moves here. Hollis is another guy. If you haven't seen him on the Independence, go check out his stuff for Pro Wrestling Experience out of the Carolinas. He's being wasted here, too. I have no problem with having enhancement talent, but that should be reserved for guys in the first two or three years of their career and who haven't learned how to really do anything exciting yet. Uh, Hollis is not a guy, nor is Ryan Pillman, a guy who should be in that role. Um, then um, opponents get hit with Moves, lots of moves. Stunt finished everything off with a top rope 450 splash for the win. He makes a good mascot, not a good wrestler. Natural Nightmares, Dustin Rhodes, QT Marshall with Brandy Rhodes and Allie defeat the Hybrid 2, Jack Evans and Angelico. My, how they've fallen. Rhodes and Marshall go to work and are in dominant position most of the match. They have learned some new Double team maneuvers during the time off. Uh, hybrid 2 doesn't have a lot of offense. Marshall makes a hot tag to Rhodes, who hits a spinning suplex for the win. And then we go to Penelope Ford with Kip Sabian, defeating Rachel Ellering. Poor Rachel Ellering. She's one of the better women on this roster, and to be putting over Penelope Ford just because Ford has a contract and she doesn't, to me, is a travesty of justice. Uh... And so, Ellering makes her singles debut, and uh, she is coming back off the injury of a torn ACL, suffered while part of the NXT brand in the middle of last year. She makes a tag. She made a tag debut on the on the on the women's tag show. Very back and forth match. Ellering with a beautiful spine buster for near fall, but. Um, Ford hits a fisherman suplex for the win. Great match back and forth. It's worth going out of your way to watch. They they got about eight minutes a little over. And Ellering is probably in the top four or five women in the entire division. Maybe top three, depending on the week. Then I scratch my head again as I wonder why the Butcher and the Blade are pushed so hard as they are in your main event of Dark this week against S SCU, this iteration, Kazarian. And Christopher Daniels, when you think that Daniels and Kazarian were the top tag team in both Ring of Honor and TNA, now Impact, and now they're relegated to a main event on a, on a YouTube show, it just makes me sad. Anyway, Kazarian and Blade start off. Um, good technical wrestling here. Kazarian, for those that don't know, a former a, a student of Killer Kowalski. I've been around. Walter for years before he passed, and he always spoke highly of Frankie Kazarian. Uh, the fake crowd is not very uh, active here. And then Daniels and Kazarian uh, definitely have the more experience as a team, and they executed more double team maneuvers, cut the ring off better. Uh, and then... Daniels is going for the best moonsault ever, but the Butcher interrupts him and catches him. They they catch him with the, with the full death uh, for the pinfall again. First of all, Daniels should be used better than this to get over guys that are younger. Kazarian could be in a tag team or single and do very well. Butcher and Blade again 
There's another team of, I think it's just they have jobs because they have friends, but I'm not really sure because I don't really, I, d I don't get it. I don't see where they're a money-drawing group of people. Anyway, that's the review for Dark this week. Dynamite tomorrow. I will be up late with the review as I have some appointments to attend to tomorrow night, but my goal is to get it up sometime on Thursday morning at the latest. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.